Hello and welcome. This is going to be a short VOD on CVP demonstration capabilities in the Richardson, Texas CIS2 demo system. Log on to the CIS2 demo system with your regular credentials. Once you're logged on, you'll come in through remote desktop and on the left hand side here you'll have the Cisco Unified Call Studio. Go ahead and click on that and I'll bring up the uh, actual um, call studio itself. Uh, it's important to note to your customers that CPP Studio is based on Eclipse framework to provide a drag and drop graphical development. Uh, if you look over here on the left hand side here we have navigation. Under navigation here you will find different um, call flows and CPP projects in which you can access. These are call flows that aren't necessarily live within the system. However, you can go in and make changes to the system and go ahead and deploy those uh, in replacement of existing systems if you want or obviously create new ones. So, so these are your total studio projects that you have over here in the left. Underneath that, you have the elements. This elements actually contain a collection of pre-built building blocks that help speed up the application development. Things like decision elements, action elements, application transfers, web services, uh, different actions. So this is the palette driven portion of it which you actually bring out which I'll demonstrate here in a few minutes. What I have brought out available here is a CIS retail main with my identification on it. Down below here you have the different pages of this particular call flow. I show this to our customers however to caution you as to Utilize it just as an example, simply because it's it's not real complex, but it's enough to where maybe customers might be a little bit taken aback from that. But I do utilize that to show some of the capabilities uh, prior to actually building the call flow. Over on the right hand side here, we have the element configuration. We have the general, that's uh, actually how the element configuration is executed. We usually leave that blank. And then we go to the settings. This is how the configurable voice action decisions how the tasks are performed throughout. You can see in here no input, no match count. As you go over the top of this, this actually help you with your customer demo. It actually comes up with a description of exactly what each individual element is. Next one over here is the audio. The audio groups actually provide you the ability to transcribe and or type out any kind of voice messaging that you would like to have. Down here, there's a couple radio buttons here. The audio file slash TTS. If in fact there was an audio file pre recorded on this, you go ahead and check mark to use default audio path. That prepends your command line, if you will, or uh, the file directory. And then wherever this WAV file that actually has the context underneath here is available, it will play that specific WAV file. The TTS transcript down below here is something that you would utilize if in fact you had text-to-speech and you had a nuanced back end where you can do that. Within the contact center enterprise in Richardson you do have that option. However, I try to keep this real basic and just show the capability. The Say a Smart tab here, this is an ability to look at different ways to react to what the caller input is. In this particular Example here, we have the type, it's a credit card, and the input format is numbers, slash, numbers, slash, digital numbers, and then down below is digits with pauses, and then you can respond back and read back to these particular responses. Okay, now I move to the area to where I actually build out a new project here for the customer. Again, we're going to make this very, very simple. Go up here to File, under New and go to the Call Studio project. Hit that here and we're going to call this Demo 1. So I went ahead up here and named this, the pro project name is Demo 1. Hit Next. Here I can show them what the deployment ver version is, language, we're, we're US, so don't. this is all default here. Uh, down the Voice XML Gateway, I'm just utilizing Cisco DTMF. There are other options here, Nuance and available. You just show them that and let them know that this is a different options available. Down below here, these are the loggers, actually where the information is in the loggers, error log, admin log. 
hit next to go here this is the audio settings generic message sorry this has been an error so if there's any kind of error going on within your project or within the call flow itself this is actually where that way file is located down below that is a suspended message in fact you need to suspend a particular call flow then this message would actually play when anybody were to enter into the CVP for that specific call flow. A suspended audio for that is here, this location for that. There's also initial on hold audio location, main on hold location. Hit next. This is the application start and stop. So if there's required any dialogue into an applications on the back end, any kind of databases and such, this is where you would actually add that in the system. So in some cases, developers want you to be able to perform certain dialogue into a database to open it up to allow access, and then a certain dialogue in order to close it down. There are other options for that, but this is the area which you would provide that information. Go ahead and do finish at this point. Now I've got a uh, call flow set up here, and I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to add some other elements. Start of the call flow, that automatically comes up. You can see the tab up at the top, which has my demo here. A part of any elements, you must begin with CVP's uh, sub-dialog start, and you must return to a sub-dialog return. So I, I bring that up, kind of show the caller input for each places here. I'll talk about the settings some. And then in our particular case, what I do, again, keeping this very simple, I'll go ahead and highlight and drag out the audio. Audio will be here. Go back over the general, the settings. And then the, actually in the audio tab, I'll go ahead and highlight that. Audio item number one. Remember previously, if you had a menu audio here, I'll go ahead and bring one out and just show it. There's audio groups here they can do the initial audio group one. Then you would have an audio for each and every menu that would be on here. So I'll go ahead and uh, remove this one. So back to audio one, audio file and or TTS. Again, the use of default audio path would prepend wherever your WAV file is. You don't have to keep typing the, the entire path. And then down below, if in fact you're doing TTS, you would actually type in uh, the information or and or the greeting in which you want to provide. Say it smart, as we said before, this is where you would actually do some customization as to, let's say you were asking for credit card input and be able to feed it back to them as digits with pauses, that sort of thing can use a recorded audio at this particular point. Okay, so we kind of walked through that there. I'm going to go back here <clears throat> to our design. And you look, and there's no connection between the two. So I try to promote this. It's very easy to do. So I go over the uh, start of the call. And I want to do an exit state at this point. So I go ahead and do that. I don't click again. You go and just drag. You don't even drag it down. Just move your mouse, move your cursor down over the next element. Go ahead and do a left click on the mouse and then that connects it. Same thing for my sub dialog. I have exit states here. I do a done and I bring that down and I go ahead and cover it. And you notice a little hieroglyphic here of the cautionary uh, item here in triangle. It just means there's no exit state on this or done state. So I, again, I go to the exit state. I hit my done. Don't do anything. Bring it over. Cover the, the next element and hit the left click on the mouse. Now, this is all set up. Very simple. Try to keep it simple so the customer isn't overwhelmed, especially the first time looking at this, right? I'll go ahead and move that back. Now, next thing to do is, hey, I want to deploy this. Well, you can't really deploy this if it were, were a full call flow without doing some kind of validation. So at this particular point, I go up to file. I actually go to demo. Uh, go ahead and do a left click on it. And this gives me options all the way down in order to do different things. The ones that I actually highlight and talk about is a debugger. In fact, we if we had a uh, uh, project that wasn't operating correctly, we want to do a debugger, we could do that. Uh, documenter, I could actually ask to document this out and set full documentation, uh, drawings, the steps, the elements, and the information behind it. Deploy, we aren't going to do that yet, but this is where you would actually deploy it out on the system. The one that I stop at and do is validate. So I'll go ahead, and I'm, what I'm going to do is left-click here, and obviously I found an error. It says, please cease the call studio problems. This is down below where this message area down here is helpful. So as I look at that, I'll go ahead and do an OK here, get that out of the way, my call studio problems. 
So demo one. So this is where the sub dialog CVP. Uh, expand this a little bit. Uh, sub dialog return zero one uh, has an issue in it. So the caller input cannot be left blank. Okay. So this is the return. So I go up here and if I'm a CVP sub dialog return, go ahead and highlight that. And sure enough, on a caller input, it's asking for something. Now, if you build this, you can just put a space in there. However, for demonstration purposes, what I do, so I say, you know what, I want the caller input to be A and I. So I'll go ahead and put that there, go back, then I'll go back to my demo one, go ahead and right click, go down to validate, and it validates. You look down here, the studio problems have disappeared. Now, there's many ways in which you will probably demonstrate the studio. This is a very high level, how to just get around and do a really quick demonstration. You can drive this as deep and as wide as you want. I'm sure through your discovery efforts between yourself and your PSS and entire team, you understand exactly what the requirements are and custom fit your demonstration to them. That's all I have today. Thank you.